But again, I don't think he is motivated financially or on the make. I, I think, I think, I mean, if you take bigotry and xenophobia as as uh, evidence of idiocy, then then he is an idiot. I think he genuinely thinks, for reasons that continue to elude me, as is often the case with with nationalists, he, can, he genuinely thinks that by dint of being English, he's got some sort of winning ticket in the lottery of life, which makes it all the odder that he would dedicate almost all of his political career to making this a less successful, less attractive country. Uh, 1042 culminate, or not even culminating today, this report in the Daily Telegraph that describes um, the British passport as having plummeted from first to joint 13th over the course of the last um, 12 years. Thank you, Gary. I, I, I don't know if, I mean... I, I, I wonder whether forelock tuggers know they're tugging their forelock. I always remember the call up that we took after Prince Philip passed away. And he was a naval veteran himself. And he honestly thought that Prince Philip was a higher value human than him. And I, I mean, it was a polite exchange, but a heartbreaking one. So... There are people who honestly think that Jacob Rees-Mogg is a higher value human than them. And I know I sound very um, naive when I say this, because many people perhaps, because I, I went to quite, a, I went to a posh school, I went to a public school, so I'm very much a victim or a, or a product of my own background as well, which is very much a revist. You know, there's no, no long history of, of, of hyphens or, or, or anything like that in my family. Although, to be fair to Jacob Rees-Mogg, I think his maternal granddad was a, was a, was a van driver or something. Um, I, I, I never got it. I never understood it. And then that hymn, we got reminded about, about a year ago, was it? About 18 months ago? That verse in All Things Bright and Beautiful that just most of us sang as kids, if you're Gary's age or my age, you would have sung it in school. The rich man in his castle, the poor man at his gate, God made them high and lowly and ordered their estate. We are taught from the cradle in this country that some people who have inherited privilege and wealth are higher value humans than the rest of us. And that possibly is the third dimension to this conversation. So Jacob Rees-Mogg, obviously stupid, obviously dishonest. 52% one, 48% of the other. Question... How does he get away with it? Answer, because people genuinely believe he's a higher value human than them. So even when they are presented with evidence of his dishonesty and his stupidity, they think they must be making a mistake, which leads us inexorably to the fairy tale that we have deployed more than any other in the descriptions of Brexit, the emperor's new clothes. How come everybody in the crowd insisted that the emperor was wearing beautiful clothes? Answer, because they thought they were inferior they were told that if they couldn't see the emperor's new clothes, it was because they were inferior. So if you are still clinging to the idea that the Minister for Brexit Opportunities is anything other than a dissembling fool, a Victorian undertaker cosplay, then it's because you have been persuaded that you're inferior. So all of the evidence you can see of his idiocy and his dishonesty and his absurdity, it must be your fault. It must be... It must be you that's making a mistake because he is your natural superior he is an innately superior human and that's what class systems are designed to do whether it's the hindu caste system or the english class system it's designed to perpetuate inequality and privilege by making people on the wrong end of the unfairness think that somehow that's exactly where they deserve to be and i'm here to help <laughs>